Coming up on this Friday edition of Daybreak, President Park and Hay calls on ASEAN members to further liberalise their free trade agreement to broaden business opportunities for Korean firms in one of the world's fastest growing regions. On the sidelines of the ASEAN summit, President Park holds back-to-back -back talks with the leaders of six Southeast Asian countries as Korea looks to boost its economic presence in the region. First responding to a damning Senate report, CIA Director John Brennan says enhanced interrogation techniques did yield intelligence that saved lives and he disputes the report's conclusions. Daybreak begins now. Hello and thanks for joining us to our viewers around the world. It's 6am on Friday, December 12th here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom and you're tuned in to Daybreak. And we start at the Korea ASEAN Commemorative Summit, which goes into its second and final day on this Friday in Korea's southern port city of Busan. Korea and the 10 members of ASEAN will review their current relations and identify ways to boost their strategic alliance. The leaders will also discuss the further liberalisation of their free trade agreement. Global issues, including climate change, are also on the agenda. Now, following the summit, Korean President Park Geun-hye is scheduled to unveil a joint statement on Korea and ASEAN's visions on expanding their partnership based on their discussions in Busan. And the Korea ASEAN Commemorative Summit kicked off on Thursday with a CEO summit. It was there that President Park Geun-hye urged further liberalization of the Korea ASEAN Free Trade Agreement to expand business opportunities between Korea and the Southeast Asian bloc. For me, more details, our Hwang Sang Yi reports from Busan. Speaking before some 570 business leaders from Korea and ASEAN member countries, President Park geun -hye called for further liberalization of the Korea ASEAN Free Trade Agreement to open up more business opportunities. She noted that the efficiency rate of Korea's FTA with its second largest trade partner is only half that of similar agreements with other countries due to a high number of restraints. Korea's trade volume with ASEAN jumped 16-fold from some 8 billion U.S. dollars in 1989 to 135 billion dollars last year, making ASEAN Korea's second largest trade partner. The region is also the number three investment destination for Korean businesses after the United States and China. President Park proposed diversifying their economic cooperation into the service sector beyond the energy and manufacturing sectors, showing a willingness to lift regulations if necessary. 어떤 분야의 규제 개혁이 필요한지 현장의 목소리를 전달해 주시면 아세안 국가와 협의해서 영내 포괄적 경제 동반자 협정 협상에 반영을 하는 등 적극적으로 개선해 나가겠습니다. The Korea ASEAN CEO Summit was basically a venue for business leaders to network and open up new business opportunities that could ultimately help the two partners reach their target trade volume of 200 billion U.S. dollars by the year 2020. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News, Busan. And on the first day of the Korea ASEAN Summit in Busan, President Park Geun-hye had a very busy day holding back-to-back -back bilateral meetings with six leaders from the region. Most of the talks were focused on promoting economic cooperation. Our Che Sun reports. After concluding an FTA with Vietnam, the Korean president secured a positive response from her Indonesian counterpart Thursday when she suggested they resume their FTA negotiations. Such bilateral deals are expected to increase the number of Korean firms that can benefit from free trade with ASEAN. As for investments in the region, the Thai Prime Minister promised to allow a Korean company retain priority when Bangkok selects a bidder for part of its $10 billion river management project. 
President Bak first raised the issue to the Thai leader last month after the new government in Bangkok said it would reconsider giving Korea priority. Winning infrastructure construction bids has become a major deal for Korean firms, with the ASEAN closely trailing the Middle East in terms of market size. On regional security, ASEAN leaders were united in voicing concerns about the threat of Pyongyang's nuclear weapons development to world peace and endorsed President Bak's efforts to denuclearize the peninsula by way of inter-Korean trust building and non-political cooperation. South Korea, as an aid recipient turned donor nation, pledged to expand development assistance to Laos and customize Korea's Hemaul Undong, or modernization of rural communities, to meet the needs of the Southeast Asian country. In addition, Seoul vowed to soon assist the Philippines with recovery efforts in the aftermath of a typhoon in the country, which claimed dozens of lives. Following a marathon of talks, President Buck hosted her ASEAN counterparts and first ladies at a banquet that fused a tradition and modernity representing both Korea and ASEAN. Having reaffirmed their will to boost their cooperative ties, the 11 leaders will meet on Friday to discuss a range of regional and global issues. Choi Yusan, Arirang News, Busan. And staying with the summit, of all the places that the Korean wave has reached, it's absolutely red hot in Southeast Asia. But summit organizers have turned the spotlight back in the other direction, highlighting the extremely rich cultures of ASEAN member countries. Our Connie Kim filed this report from Busan. Leaders from Korea and ASEAN member nations are not only strengthening economic and diplomatic relations here in Busan, they're also focusing on the cultural ties that bind them. For Korea, that means promoting Hallyu or the Korean wave. The first places that washed ashore overseas were in ASEAN member countries. It's been a boon for Korea's tourism industry, with the number of tourists from ASEAN member countries on a steady rise over the past four years. Last year, the figure came to 1.5 million. On the sidelines of the Korea ASEAN Summit, Korea is returning the favor through the ASEAN Living Culture Festival, where the cultural jewels of Southeast Asia nations are on display. The statue of the Buddha is very different from Korea's. I only remember seeing these abroad. It's fascinating to see it in Busan. Participating performers from ASEAN member nations say the festival serves to promote their culture to Korea. We actually have been invited uh, to perform to this festival and we are representing Malaysia and we are doing the show. I hope that all the crowd uh, will be enjoying the performing. A special art exhibition is also being held at the Pusan Museum of Art and more than 100 pieces of art are on display to give visitors a better understanding of the region's histories and traditions. Korea's cultural ties with ASEAN are only expected to grow closer. And with plans to establish the ASEAN Culture House in 2017, Busan is now hoping to become the symbol city of strong cultural ties with ASEAN member nations. Connie Kim, Arirang News, Busan. We start before the sun rises to bring you the latest stories out of Korea. We also lead the way with important global coverage. Stay on the pulse of what is happening with Daybreak. Now, micro-blogging website Twitter has a very strong presence here in Korea, and Twitter Korea has reported its top tweets for 2014 and says the nation's biggest story by far was April's Sewolho ferry disaster. Now, this tragedy was the event most tweeted about, with many tweets, of course, in the form of thoughts and prayers for the victims and their families. Next on the list was Korean figure skating queen Kim Yana's final performance in February at the Winter Olympics in Sochi, which she came home with a silver. Following were local elections in June and Pope Francis's very successful trip to Korea back in August. Globally, the most tweeted event of the year was the World Cup semi-final match in July in which Germany thrashed Brazil. 
Now, it was once a kind of smoker's paradise, but Korea is fast becoming a very inconvenient place for those wishing to light up. First came higher cigarette prices, and now smokers are going to have fewer places to smoke. Korea's health ministry says smoking will be banned in all restaurants, regardless of their size. Smoking is currently banned in establishments that are 100 square metres or larger. The new rules begin in January. But there will be a grace period of around three months. After that, people found lighting up in restaurants face fines of roughly 90 US dollars. Electronic cigarettes are also subject to this ban. The ministry's move is part of efforts to lower Korea's smoking rate, which is still among the highest in the OECD. Cigarette prices will increase by around $2 a pack to around $4.5 a pack starting on uh, January 1st under some new measures. Now, Korea Central Bank has decided to keep the nation's key interest rate steady at a record low of 2% for the month of December. Deflecting calls to cut the rate, the governor of the Bank of Korea says structural reforms, not further cuts, are needed to boost growth. Uh, Hwang Jie reports. The Bank of Korea decided on Thursday to stand pat on its 2% key interest rate that follows two previous rate cuts in the second half of this year, which came in line with government efforts to boost the ailing domestic economy. While market expectations are building for another rate cut early next year, the top central banker pointed to the need for structural reforms to pull the economy out of its low growth rut. Despite aggressive stimulus measures, the economy is not picking up, and that's because of the structural issues. Unless the economy goes through structural reforms, it won't break free from this low growth and low inflation. Further lowering the key rate would also stoke concerns about snowballing household debt, which already stands at roughly 950 billion U.S. dollars. The government's deregulation drive in the housing sector and a lower key interest rate worked in tandem to boost housing loans. Economic conditions outside of the country do not look all that bright either. Except for the U.S., advanced economies are suffering from sluggish growth. Emerging economies and China are also experiencing slowdowns. The Korea Development Institute has cut its growth outlook for next year to 3.5 percent, with many other institutions also downgrading their forecasts. The central bank governor also hinted about an upcoming downward revision in its growth forecast of 3.9 percent for next year, citing the sluggish eurozone and Chinese economies and weak sentiment at home. Hwang Jie, Arirang News. Now, staying with economic news and the frantic rush to scoop up shares in Jail Industries ahead of its highly anticipated IPO has now come to an end. The pre-order bidding period ended on Thursday for private investors who are looking to cash in as the Samsung subsidiary closes in on its stock market debut next week. Song Jison reports. One out of 195. Those were basically the odds for picking up one of Chael Industries' 5.7 million shares made available to the public. A record high $30 billion were deposited before the subscription period closed on Thursday. As investors seeking profits rushed to make sure they didn't miss out on the chance, with interest rates hovering at record lows. The biggest IPO of 2014 was even more attractive with its listing price set at just under $50 per share. Many market watchers forecast that figure will easily surpass $100 soon after trading begins on the main board next Thursday. When you invest in and bid for a share seeking profit, you want the share price to jump to double its IPO price. I'm hoping that will happen in this case since Samsung's a big and stable company. The company has a diverse portfolio and there is internal demand from Samsung's subsidiaries. These factors have investors bullish about its mid- and long-term profit outlook. But the biggest beneficiaries will not be the individual investors. Samsung Group chairman Lee Gunny's three children acquired a 40 percent stake in the company for just $8 million in 1996 through a controversial arrangement, which critics say ensure the controlling family maintain a firm grip on the conglomerate. 
These heirs are also estimated to have evaded billions of dollars in inheritance taxes and stand to gain some $5 billion in cash if Jail's shares hit $100. Samsung's IPOs and restructuring measures this year are expected to help the chairman's three children gain better control over the conglomerate. The transfer of ownership from the Samsung chairman to his children became an urgent issue for the conglomerate this year, especially after Chairman Yi's heart attack in May. Song Ji-sun, Arirang News. Well, it's time now for a look through the global headlines we're following on this Friday morning from Seoul. For that, we turn to Eunice Kim at the New Center for the Updates. Good morning, Eunice. And good morning to you, Mark. CIA Director John Brennan has spoken out amid mounting criticism against his agency for its past use of brutal cat tactics against terror suspects after the 9-11 attacks. From CIA headquarters in Virginia, Brennan admitted that agency officers used unauthorized interrogation techniques in a limited number of cases and should have been held accountable, but that the overwhelming majority of officers carry out their duties faithfully Faithfully and in accordance with legal and policy guidelines. Now, overall, he said the controversial interrogation program was helpful in thwarting attacks, capturing terrorists, and saving lives. He added that it was his view that it was unknowable whether the use of enhanced interrogation techniques had led to the information from detainees. Brennan's announcement comes days after a U.S. Senate report revealed the extent of the abhorrent methods used by the CIA under the Bush administration. Individuals and nations, as well as the United Nations, have been calling for prosecution against U.S. agents who use torture tactics beyond what's allowable under international laws. But the U.S. Justice Department has said it will not pursue criminal charges, saying there was not enough evidence to prosecute. Hong Kong police have cleared out the main protest site at the heart of the city's financial center, marking an end to at least this chapter of the pro-democracy demonstrations after 75 days. Police said 209 people were arrested throughout the day Thursday for obstructing police officers and unlawful assembly. But overall, the operation, which saw some 7,000 officers deployed, was not marred by violence, as was when authorities cleared out the protest site in the Mong Kok district over two weeks ago, which had sparked several nights of violent clashes. By evening, traffic was back in Admiralty near the government headquarters. Demonstrators vowed to continue their protests through other forms of civil disobedience to win their demand for free elections in the territory's next leadership election in 2017. And finally, scientists are poring over the data from the Rosetta spacecraft's landing on a speeding comet out in space about a month ago. And already there is a hot debate about the origin of Earth's water. Our Kwanzhua explains the initial findings. Where did the water on our planet Earth come from? That is one of the questions the Rosetta mission is trying to answer. After the European spacecraft's probe made a historic touchdown on Comet 67P last month, now it's bringing us its first discoveries. One of it is the detection of water on the comet. That's no surprise. But a closer look at the results show that the water is very different from that on Earth. That's what's making scientists scratch their heads. Because so far they thought that comets that smashed into the Earth billions of years ago brought a bunch of water to the planet. But Rosetta's chemical analysis shows Comet 67P's water has three times more deuterium, a form of hydrogen, than that of water on Earth. That, according to scientists, rules out that comets are the source of Earth's water. They say this makes it more likely that water came from asteroid collisions around 3.8 billion years ago, as asteroids' hydrogen is more similar in terms of their composition. But some say it's too early to eliminate the chances that comets dump the water into the Earth, saying the deuterium-to-hydrogen ratio varies by comet. 
What we can conclude from these results is that water can develop from various different sources, either close to or far away from the sun. The principal investigator of Rosina, an instrument of the spacecraft, says the comet's high amount of deuterium means the water was formed at very low temperatures, meaning although it doesn't look like it's the water we have on Earth, it's a real treasure chest to explore very early times of our solar system. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. And TGI Friday, everyone, as we kick things off with the contract negotiation between the San Diego Padres and Kim Kwang Hyun, as things remain rather quiet even in the final 12 hours until the deadline. Now, with everyone waiting for the big news, the signing still hasn't been made official, despite rumors that the San Diego Padres have his number 29 ready for him in San Diego. Now, with the deadline at 7 a.m. Korea time, that's about 40 minutes from now, we are expecting the news to come out any time now. And now shifting over to golf this time, where the Korea Golf Writers Club chose their Player of the Year winners. And this year, the honors went to No Sung Yar, Kim Sung Hyuk, and Kim Hyo Ju. Now, first off for No Sung Yar, the 23 year old won his first PGA Tour title back in April during the Zurich Classic, also becoming the youngest Korean golfer to win a PGA Tour title. As for Kim Sung Hyuk, it took him nine long years, but he finally had a breakout season, earning the most prize money, the KPGA, and was also named this year's KPGA Player of the Year. Meanwhile, Kim Hyo Ju had one of the best seasons anyone in the KLPGA has ever had, winning five titles, including three majors, and was honored with four awards during the KLPGA award ceremony earlier this week. Now, meanwhile, moving over to artistic gymnastics, where Yang ak Sun hopes to bounce back from his injuries and finish off the year with a gold medal during the Toyota International Gymnastics Cup this weekend. Now, the London gold medalist, who has been held back with injuries this year, had to settle with a silver during the Incheon Asian Games and a seventh-place finish at the World Championships. But in a recent interview, Yang ak Sun stated he's feeling a lot better and will leave the past behind and finish the year on a high note as the Toyota International Gymnastics Cup will kick off on Saturday. And now finishing things off, some interesting news on Thursday as the Korea Football Association and SM Entertainment signed a Memorandum of Understanding. A win-win signing for both sides as the KFA plans to have some of the top K-pop stars perform during A matches while SM Entertainment plans to get into sports marketing. Both the KFA and SM Entertainment were excited to sign the MOU as they hope to combine football and entertainment to bring more excitement throughout the world. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs. It's another chilly morning today and cold wave advisory has been issued in many parts. And as for here in Seoul, temperatures dropped to minus 6 and the winds are adding a chill to the air, dropping the sensory temperatures to below minus 10. So it's going to be a chilly, windy, also a snowy day today. Snow clouds have formed in the west, getting ready to drop a snowfall from the western coastal regions before spreading to other parts of the nation and here in Seoul we'll see somewhere between one to three centimeters of snow fall from this afternoon to late in the evening. With that in mind let's take a closer look at the readings for today. Now the low in Seoul is kicking off at minus six in the afternoon high. So we'll hike up to one while Daegu and Gwangju should peak at five and four and Busan will top out at six this afternoon. And as for the other regions, Jeju Island will be getting up to seven while Daejeon and Tukdo sees highs of one and four respectively. Now despite the positive side of afternoon highs, strong winds will make us feel a lot colder than the extra temperatures, so be sure to dress warmer before heading out today. That's all for Korea and here's international weather for viewers around the world.
Well, that's all we have for now. Korea Today is coming up at 7 a.m. Korea time in about half an hour. Have a great day and a fabulous weekend. Goodbye.